Finally, they've both been released, but which one should you buy? Since availability doesn't seem to be that big of an issue, with a few exceptions, we're going to look at the price and performance of each to help you decide which one you should buy. There are three comparisons that we want to make with these new generation CPUs. From there, we can decide which one you should buy at each price point. Let's get the most expensive comparison out of the way first. That would include the flagship i9-13900K and the Ryzen 9 7950X. Looking at the i9-13900K first, we have a staggering 24 cores, 16 of them being efficiency cores along with 32 threads total, compared to the Ryzen 9 16 cores and 32 threads. Using Cinebench R23 for multi-core and single-core testing, we see a staggering lead for Intel. Coming in at $40 less, we see the i9 beat the Ryzen 9 even with its limited amount of performance cores. Cinebench R23 doesn't always correlate directly to gaming performance, but this still proves to be the case in majority of different titles. Now, for the people that don't have $600 plus dollars to blow, we have the more reasonable Intel i7 13700K and the Ryzen 7 7700X. The i7 has 16 cores total, 8 of them being efficiency cores and giving a combined 24 threads, while the Ryzen 7 7700X has 8 cores and 16 threads. Once again, we see a huge Intel lead in Cinebench R23, with the i7 beating the Ryzen 7 by close to 9,000 points in multi-core and by a little over 100 in single core. Stepping away from R23, we see the same story in most titles. Intel performs better than AMD in most games, but with a really close single core performance, it's not nearly as noticeable as the Ryzen 9. With Intel priced slightly higher than AMD, both are a fair option, although the i7 seems to have more upside and high multi-core workloads. The final comparison is the most budget-friendly Intel i5 13600K and the Ryzen 5 7600X. The i5 has 14 cores, 8 of them being efficiency cores and 20 threads total, while the Ryzen 5 7600X has 6 cores and 12 threads. This comparison wasn't really close, with the i5 13600K winning by about 9,000 points once again in multi-core and by 50 points in single core. Once again, like the Ryzen 7 and the Intel i7, these performance differences won't be nearly as noticeable in gaming due to the single core performance being so close. But it also appears that in almost any high multi-core workload, Intel has a slight edge on AMD. In total, there's a clear winner across the board, but we also can't forget that certain games just run better on certain platforms. But that's not the only reason Ryzen hasn't completely lost. Intel's in its last year of their current socket type, so on one hand you can still use DDR4, but it will lack any upgradeability next year with the new LGA2551 expected to release. Whereas AMD tends to stick with their socket much longer than Intel, which means you might get a larger return on your motherboard investment. As far as thermals and power draw, we see significantly higher heat output from Intel and higher power draw from AMD, which is always something to consider. Although we didn't mention the F-Series and the 7900X due to the lack of comparables, they're also another option. If you want something high-end right now, Intel appears to be the way to go, but if you're looking to start small and work your way up, AMD might be a good starting point for a strong upgrade path. But realistically, it's just so close.